Hello, my name is Navigator. If you play Fallout 76 as often as I do, you will know of the daily quest, Someone to Talk To. Uh, this is a daily quest that a lot of 76 players, including myself, hate. It is uh, very difficult, it's not super easy, it's pretty tedious, and uh, honestly when I do it, I just kind of get it over with and uh, move on with my day. But yesterday, when I was playing, I uh, thought a little deeper about it, and I realized that the, the story behind the quest is actually very, very interesting, and it kind of relates to other examples within the Fallout universe. So today, uh, I'm going to try to make this video as quick as possible. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, and I kind of want to organize it, compact it. So without further ado, let's get into this. All right. I am here in uh, Mononga. This is located uh, just left of Fort Atlas, and uh, I am at Dr. Eddie Harrison's house. This is where you start the Someone to Talk To mission, so it'll eventually or initially tell you to uh, come here and investigate the house, but uh, after a while, you can just keep coming right here and just getting the, getting the stuff for the mission and moving on. But what we're going to do today is look at... Um, some stuff down here in his basement. So, uh, just first off, you can kind of see that this does not look like an ordinary basement. You can see all of these, uh, this like power routing and wires and all this. It looks like something that the uh, the Ghostbusters would have for the Ecto Containment Unit. Uh, maybe not a just regular house in a random city. Um, walking in here, though, this looks like a, a whole lab down here. Oh my gosh, there's like CAT scans, there's computers, uh, you know, you got chem benches, all this, even a periodic table of elements. Um, there also seem to be some animal cages over here, but that is uh, a reasonable assumption to make because this quest does involve animals. So what we're going to do is come over here to Dr. Eddie Harrison's terminal and take a look at what the uh, Vox interpreter whatever the Vox Interpreter project really is. So, um, loading into the terminal here, it says Dr. Eddie Harrison's scientific log. Welcome, Dr. Harrison. What would you like to look at today? So, uh, I just uh, went through here the development journal and the conversations. Uh, the development journal is actually empty, and these conversations, there's only one that I want to talk about, but we'll get to that in a second. So, what uh, is the Vox Interpreter? Okay, so coming in here, uh, I'm going to give you just kind of a summary of this. So what he does is he talks about, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, all these people in the city were making fun of me because I was in my basement. I was a recluse. Uh, oh, Dr. Harrison, you know, or sorry, gee, Dr. Harrison, do you ever leave your basement? Even those uncouth raiders haven't come back since they picked over the town. So, um... He is like a recluse, he's very into his work, and uh, it doesn't really seem like he has really great social skills. Um, however... He did come up with an idea, uh, pre-war, of uh, this device that could turn the incoherent babblings of infants into artificial speech patterns. And that way, uh, their parents and other people, maybe the doctors, whatever, could understand uh, even just a little bit of what they were saying. So it says here that uh, it lightly worked, but uh, I guess he never found any subjects. Um, all right, so the bombs drop, and Eddie Harrison is again alone. Um, the development journal, this is just... Uh, don't, don't worry about that, I know I'm scrolling through here, but anyways, he is alone, and uh, what he decides to do is start typing conversations into his computer. What he will do is uh, he'll be sober, and he'll type a message to himself, and then he'll get very, very drunk, and... Uh, uh, answer the message while he's drunk, and uh, as he puts, the disparity between my inebriated self versus my sober self shall at the very least provide somewhat unexpected results. So he goes through here, and uh, these first four termin or sorry, these first five terminals are really not too important. They're just uh, you know him responding. It's not really super important, but this last one down here is so. Uh, what he did in the last entry was he decided that he was going to rework his Vox Interpreter from, uh, sorry, from babies to animals, and that way he would have plenty of people to talk to, and they would not be human. So, let me, uh, let me just read through this. All right. Damn it all! The Vox Interpreter seems to work. However, the bite I sustained seems to be infected, and that infection is spreading. Who would have imagined I would be done in by a mutated hairless squirrel? I'm fading faster than I would have liked. I'll leave everything here as it is when I'm gone, so someone else can continue feeding data into the program. Maybe someone will see the wisdom in my writings. Don't let opportunities pass you by. Be brave. Well, Doctor, uh, we are definitely seeing the wisdom in your writings. 
If life after the war has taught me anything, it's a lo how lonely the world can be. Do anything you can to remain sane. If you've found this, you're going to want what I've created. Use it to gather more data, and maybe one day, the right person with the right skills will come along to finish my work. At least we can give them the data they'll need for the job. Well, Doctor, I really appreciate that, and we definitely are going to continue your work. So... That is the conversations part of this. What you would do now is there would be a prompt here to begin the Vox Interpreter uh, cycle, or sorry, exercise. And that would give you the Vox Interpreter holotape, which we can listen to right now. Welcome, Dr. Harrison. The Vox Interpreter program is now running. Stand by for today's data assignment. Valid Vox Interpretation Banks loaded. Ensure you maintain the minimum transmission distance from the guard while you collect the requisite amount of box data per sample. Happy hunting. All right, so that is the... Um just the main part of the uh, the quest, someone to talk to. You go around and you uh, shoot, you know, enemies below, or sorry, animals with the Vox Syringer. So what we're going to do is that you take the holotape from the, the terminal, obviously, and then you come over here to the metal box and you pick up the Vox Syringer along with some ammo. So let's equip this. Oh, sure, I showed this off. So the Vox Interpreter is a unique weapon, technically. Uh, it says Vox Syringer can make the target, quote-unquote, speak. So... Uh, gives us some ammo. Typically the syringer isn't really used by a lot of people for builds or anything, uh, but this is uh, just about the only time that I really ever use this. So, seems to be some shit going down over there. Let's find out where we have to go for this. So, um, shoot a cat. Alright, let's find out. So I'm going to come over here to Beckwith Farm, and we're going to try this out. Um, I, I do this quest every day. Um, the animals, like, vary, uh, you know, they're in different locations, different spawns. It's very difficult because sometimes people will come around and just kill the animals, either for fun or, you know, because they have explosive weapons. And, you know, like, it's, uh, it's very, very easy to kill a cat or a squirrel or a rad rat, so uh, sometimes you can't always get those. And that's why the mission is a little difficult. And uh, you also see one of the other reasons is because you have to wait around for like fucking 45 seconds to get the data and uh, a lot of the enemies will run away. So we're over here at this billboard here where these cats spawn and let's uh, let's light them up. Someone come in here over here to vats if I can. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So he is now glowing purple and you will be able to hear him talk. All right. So I'm going to turn up my audio really, really, really fast here, so you guys be able to hear him. Let's see. Now I am mad. Act. Not today. Oh. Maybe this is literally a talking cat. He's, he's talking. Now I am mad. Oh, no. So we wait here, I got another 10 this seconds on this. Bad. Bad. Oh. Box transmission received successfully. Alright, beautiful. So that is uh, one part of the quest done. Um, oh, I guess he... I don't know why he keeps getting hurt. But, uh, yeah, there you have it. So, um, just a side note, the dialogue, it's always going to be that guy. I mean, I guess even if the, the animal is a male or female. And uh, they usually say very similar stuff, uh, but depending on the animal, like a cat, a cat is passive, so it will have a less aggressive and more passive dialogue than, say, an angler. An angler will be like, I want to kill you. Yes, something to eat. Stuff like that. So, um... I guess that it makes sense uh, on two points. A, that you know they're obviously not going to make unique dialogue for every single different time that you shoot an animal, plus every single different animal. And B, uh, animals aren't you know they don't really have they're not as smart as humans. I guess that's the point. They don't have big enough brains, and it doesn't really seem like they'd be able to formulate like you know coherent and like complex sentences. So you know like kill and don't eat me, like shit like that is pretty obvious. So. With that out of the way, let's talk about like what all this means, how it works, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to come into photo mode here. The first thing I want to talk about is how the Vox interpreter thing itself works. Now, there's like no information about this as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I'm just trying to think in my head. So when you, you shoot him with the syringe, uh, that's that's the first thing. So 
the whatever device or fluid or serum that is, you know, or, or sorry, sorry, I should rephrase that. It must be a fluid or a serum or something that is creating these, uh, these vocal patterns or whatever for these animals because you are shooting a syringe. So it must be some kind of like, you know, like, uh, like physical thing. It's not going to be like a microchip or like some kind of like, uh, you know, machine that's going to translate this. This is something that you're actually putting into the animal that, uh, I guess the way I could put it would be like to rework their DNA or something like that in order to get them to like have, you know, coherent speech patterns. Um, I guess another little side note, it was, it would be kind of funny to see, uh, Dr. Harrison trying to shoot a syringe at an infant child, but, uh, that, that's actually kind of funny, yeah. Um, all right, anyways, so that's, uh, it's an interesting thing, because typically you would think about, like, uh, like, if you guys have seen Up, the, uh, the Pixar movie Up, Doug, the dog, he's got, like, a little box on his neck that changes his, uh, like, his, interprets his voice into, like, human speech patterns, and, uh, that's not the case here, so it must be some kind of, like, serum, something like that. I wonder if uh, Dr. Harrison was manipulating DNA, possibly, maybe splicing some kind of thing like that, maybe some kind of chemical mixture that would, I don't know, change the, the animals. But I guess that, you know, we're never really going to find out what the Vox serum, let's call it, is made out of or really how the animals are like, you know, prone to speaking like this. I, I really don't get it. And there's not a lot of information about it, but it is just a very interesting thing overall. I mean, we're making animals talk. And on that subject, uh, the only other instance of this that I can really think of is from Fallout 2. Now, I was on with my good friend Wastelord earlier today, and he uh, formed, or sorry, informed me of uh, some information about this. So, uh, the Death Claws, uh, as far as I know came from Vault 13, and uh, they were, they moved in after you left the vault, and uh, they were eventually wiped out by Frank Horgan in the Enclave. Uh, they somehow uh, managed to talk. Now, I'm pretty sure it was something where it was like the Enclave, or somebody manipulated their DNA, or like they were exposed to radiation, but long story short, Deathclaws were talking, and they were actually like very intelligent, if not hyper-intelligent creatures. Um, the only other instance I can think of that is kind of like this is in Fallout 3 when the Enclave used to, like, tame them and use them for battle, but they weren't really speaking. The Death Claws on Fallout 2, you can actually have conversations with. So, the Vox Interpreter mission and uh, the Death Claws from Vault 13 are uh, the only really instances of talking animals in uh, Fallout 76, as far as I know. I mean, I guess you can include uh, Harold in there, but he really counts as, like, you know, a plant uh, instead of, like, an animal. Although I can't really think of any other ones. Huh. Uh, maybe the Trogs, but those are formerly, formerly humans. I don't know. But this, uh, this whole quest really, you know, begs a question. Could there be more to this? I mean, is this something that we could possibly see in future Fallout games? Now, I know you're probably thinking to yourself, no. But hey, there could be more instances of animals talking in Fallout. Maybe we find more of those talking death claws. And whatever uh, ideas or whatever science is behind the Vox Interpreter could be the same science behind whatever we see in the future. And who knows? Maybe Dr. Harrison could have been on the same wavelength as whoever created the talking death claws in Vault 13. And it all comes full circle. Who knows? But I wanted to talk about all this today because I figured that uh, this was an interesting topic. A lot of people really hate this, uh, this this quest, this mission, whatever you want to call it, especially me. And uh, it is very refreshing to find a redeeming quality about this. So I hope all this makes sense. Uh, I'm pretty sure I covered everything I wanted to talk about. It's just a very interesting thing to have talking animals in Fallout 76. I think that's so cool. And it's uh, something you could do every day in this game. So I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's zoom out here. My name is Navigator. Have a nice day. Take care.